Hello, welcome, welcome gorgeous beings of light. Welcome to the 100 Miracles in 100 Days project and the Effortless Manifesting and Awareness Activation on today, New Year's Day. So just take a huge, big belly breath in. And let it out with a bit of a sigh. When you feel your awareness coming back in, return to breathing in through the nose and out through the nose. While we do a really quickie activation of your awareness. So bring your awareness into your body and everything to do with your body including all your gripes and aches and pains and features of your body, especially the bits you don't like about it. Toss that all out the window or put it in another room for me and breathe. See if you can notice how much lighter you are without all those stories floating around inside of you. And just breathe into your being. And bring into your awareness all those things to do with your identity, name, address, phone number, date of birth, where you live, the car you drive, kids, cats, dogs, pets, family, qualifications, job, occupation, university degrees and throw them all out the window as well. We'll place them in another room and breathe. Now you may not necessarily be able to notice something but some people can feel like a tingling in their hands or in their feet. They're all good, a bit of warmth. They're all signs energy is moving but again you may not be feeling a damn thing but that does not mean that something truly powerful isn't happening for you. Just breathe. And bring your awareness now into all of your emotions and your feelings and opinions and toss them out the window as well. Lightening yourself up even more. Now shift your awareness to your thoughts, your conscious mind, your unconscious mind and your subconscious mind and toss them all out the window or in another room as well. And to the new addition to our awareness activation that was presented to me about a week ago, and it feels to me like one of the most important ones. I want you to bring your awareness into your heart and ask that all of the heartache and all the times you've suffered with a broken heart or a heartbreak and then also all the walls you've put up around your heart so that people can't hurt you and just toss them out the window or in another room. Even if it's just temporarily, because as the Heart Math Institute has proven over and over again, your heart is at least, at least 5,000 times stronger than your thoughts and your mind, which is a pretty big computer system anyway. But they've also can see in some people it can be 100,000 times stronger than your mind. So great idea to drop all those walls even if it's just for the 22 minutes or whatever 15 20 minutes you're going to do this activation just breathe such a huge electrical 
being in your body, your heart. And if you've got all these constraints on it, I was only pondering the other day thinking, I wonder if that's why people get heart attacks. Because you sometimes see really fit people who run every day, etc. You know, having a heart attack at 42, why? Begs the question, doesn't it? Just why? So breathe. <clears throat> Toss all those heart walls, heartbreak and heartache out the window. And see if you can't access more of who you truly are in this moment. And breathe into that 99% untapped, pure potential, pure God source that exists underneath the 1%. 99% of our energy is focused on the 1%. But if you put that aside and focus on your 99% untapped, pure potential, pure God source that is connected to all time and space, all dimensions of life, all universes, galaxies, star systems, everything. Just breathe. Let your pure God source being, your divine I am presence, your supreme intelligence, your divine oneness, whatever name you want to call that God within you to wake up inside of you now and just breathe. And just continue to breathe. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. Interesting. The last week, every time, I'm perfectly fine until I need to do our um, miracle. And then I get this clearing, this stuff happening in my throat, which has to be tied up with speaking your truth and getting persecuted for it in the past. And I've done a lot of clearing on that. And I usually do a clearing before I start because it was perfectly fine. I didn't bother, so you might have to just put up with me doing a little <coughs> occasionally. Because the energy is so pumping, I don't want to stop and start again now. So. so I spent a lot of time today because it is the 1st of January 2023 in Australia today. I spent lots of time, it's nearly 4 p.m. in the afternoon, thinking about or feeling into what would be the best, best miracle to, to share with you because I don't know if you're feeling the same, but this feels like one of the most powerful years I've ever gone into. I don't ever remember feeling this excited and this powerful as we begin a new year. They're all usually just the same old, same old, but not, not this year. I became really excited about it leading up. And not because last year a lot of people are feeling that because, you know, of what's been happening in the world and all the lockdowns, etc. None of that bothered me. I didn't buy into any of that rubbish. I didn't wear a mask. I didn't get anything done. And I just never caught anything either because I was aware that if you operated in the fifth dimension, disease doesn't exist there. And that's certainly all the people I know that have gone ahead and done what they were told to do are all the people that have got it. So I'm glad I followed my intuition and copped a bit of flack from quite a number of people for not doing it. Just breathe. But I was excited, not because everybody's free, because you've always been free, you just chose not to be and to let someone else boss you around in the last couple of years. But I have just feel like there is an awakening of the highest order for those people who are ready to step up into the fifth dimension and beyond to step into those higher realms of light. And it began just after the eclipse in November. So just breathe for me, please. So trying to pick the miracle that's going to inspire you to stay on track, to connect to your infinite being of light within you and all the extraordinary gifts that exist within you was tough. 
because there's so many, but because I wanted it to be one that was impactful and could show you what is possible for you and for everyone else. And there's just so many of them. But this is the one, because it's short, I suppose, that I've landed on to show you how you can live in the world but not of it and show you what's possible for all of us. So just breathe for me, please. So about a decade ago, I used to do this fantastic 10-day live-in spiritual retreats. Oh, my God, they were huge. I wouldn't do them again for that long. But people's lives would be changed in those 10 days. And, and often went like the first couple of days they were getting connected to all their love and light. And then the next couple of days, all their poop came up and they were angry and cranky with me. And, and I even remember one of them, someone saying to me, oh, you're so aloof. And the other one saying, oh, you're so outspoken. Those two things are too opposite. But the aloof person, that was her mum. And the, you're so outspoken and bossy was the, that other person's dad. So, you know just shows you a spiritual teacher shows up and can be, you know, what is required for you to heal your stuff. And unfortunately, a lot of people can't see that it's their stuff. But anyway, but about day five or six into it, we used to test with the David Hawkins scale of human consciousness. That was mind-blowing how the figures got bigger and bigger and bigger. The more we went on, the more we connected everybody to their life. But what started to happen, there was a clock on the wall, a very beautiful antique clock with the roses on the wall. And this was kind of one of those sort of rosy sort of cottages or whatever that we were staying in, that I had hired. And to our complete shock and surprise, it never worked. You know, couldn't turn it up, couldn't do anything with it, wouldn't work. The clock didn't work, but about five days in, around eight, nine o'clock at night, this clock would just start ticking, you know, ticking as if it was working. And we'd put it on the time, the correct time, um, but, you know, it, and it would go until about two or three in the morning. We'd wake up in the morning and the clock wasn't working. It had stopped working. And... Um, and then again, it wouldn't go all day, but we were doing all this spiritual work on all these really high levels of light. And, you know, late at night, eight, nine, ten o'clock at night, the clock would start ticking again. And, you know, you would see, you know, we put the time right then, obviously, <laughs> again. And, you know, we'd see that it stopped. It might have gone to three o'clock the next day or four o'clock the next day, but... And this went on for the rest of the, the last five days of the retreat. We're all fascinated by it. And I just figured that it must have needed some new batteries, that the clock itself must have needed some new batteries. So this is so fascinating. So come the end of the retreat, the owners of the home came by and I mentioned to them about this clock on the wall and how the clock must need new batteries because when we were at the height of our spiritual work, you know, it would run for four or five hours and, you know, it must have been charging up the batteries and, you know, then it would run out and the owner had the most, the lady, had the most confused look on her face. I said, what's the matter? And she said to me, it's an ornamental clock. It's never worked. I said, well, it seriously did work. Maybe just get some batteries for it. She pulls it off the wall. What do you think happens next? There's no batteries in the clock. <laughs> So we weren't even charging the batteries up. Somehow we were making this clock tick. I'm guessing it was Source trying to show us how powerful, how powerful we were being. God, we had some fun in that retreat. I just It's just popped in. I'm remembering the night that we had a dance party with our angels. So we used to do different things at night. I sometimes watch a spiritual movie. 
But this particular time, we put on all this music and started dancing and invited our angels to dance with us. God, I've got a whole pile of stories about that as well to share with you one day. But that's my miracle for today to stay on track. That's the power that exists within you. Yes, it was. There was one, two, three, I can't remember. There were three or four people in the retreat. And there was so much magic happened there. But that's the one. That's the clock was ticking. And this was 10 years ago. I mean, the things that are available now, you listen to the pristine lake miracle about the woman who just wanted to sell a property and, you know, the lake was toxic. And when she got back to it, it was pristine. They're called timeline jumpings, but they're the things that are available. So if you want to continue to hang out in 3D, follow all the trends and listen to all the rubbish that's out there, then go ahead and do that. But my wish for all of you in 2000, excuse me, in 23, is that you begin to investigate this 99% untapped pure potential that is within you. When you get connected every day, ask, how can I? How can I connect to the quantum? How can I connect to my guides and angels? How can I find my soulmate? Whatever that story is. And just ask and let it go. And of course, if you would like to learn how to become a powerful fifth dimension and beyond activator and spiritual healer, then please contact me through our website. We will be training about 11 to 22 people next year in becoming a powerful fifth dimension healer. Just pray for me. And even if you don't want to do that, that's cool. But just, God, make a commitment to yourself that you're going to find out who you truly are and stop pussyfooting around and playing small. We are infinitely powerful beings of light and they have tried to shut us up for centuries, at least a couple, since it's, at least since they shut Jesus up at the turn of the century. So, But I can go back in my lineage to, you know, two and a half thousand years before Christ in the time of Isis. And aware of people trying to shut you up when you were a bright light. All of that magic, all of the magic that exists, that exists in your DNA and in your 100 trillion cells and your 100 trillion telomeres is waking up. And you can either catch that wave or you can stay the same in your 3D and get cranky with people and live by everybody else's rules and everybody else's boxes that they like to put you in. Breathe or you can choose. You can choose the extraordinary being of light that you are. As I'm often heard saying, the infinite, eternal, rich, abundant, gorgeous, gorgeous, sexy, radiant, beautiful, powerful beyond measure, being of light you've always been. You're not broken. You don't need to you don't need to fix yourself. It's a trendy saying now, but we've been using it for fifteen years. You just need to remember the magnificence of who you truly are and let that wake up inside of you. And surrender to that light and see what shows up in your life. Breathe. That is my deep, deep wish for all of you in 2023. Those of you who want to join us, those of you who don't have the money, just continue showing up and listening to these 100 miracles in 100 days because there's already a whole pile of people that were living off them and you know, food stamps two or three months ago that are now got money flowing to them endlessly and that could be you if you choose it for yourself. All right. I hoped this was short so you'd all listen to it, but <laughs> uh, not so. All right. Love, love, love. I'm going to send you all my deepest love and richest blessings for 2000 and 23 and I trust that it will be the most magnificent magnificent year of your life love 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 namaste espavo and bye for now